Have you been battling dizziness and just don't know where to start in your rehab? It can be super complicated and frustrating with all the information and content out there. So if you're suffering from dizziness and you would like to know the most current up-to-date research on what will work to treat your dizziness, you are in the right place. We are gonna go over some of the exercises that I have seen prescribed and are outdated. And you'll wanna stay tuned because we'll be discussing what the evidence says is the most effective means of treating your dizziness. Okay, so I got into my comfy clothes, all ready to talk about Cawthorn Cooksey exercises. They have been around for a while. I know they are still prescribed and the exercises are very appropriate in some ways for some people. And what we're gonna do is go through each of those and kind of pick apart the exercises and actually make them appropriate for vestibular therapy. And I wanna backtrack a second because when I say vestibular therapy, the most effective exercises dealing with hypofunction, either unilateral or bilateral, meaning one or both inner ear nerves, the most appropriate exercises are gaze stability. So when I see videos promoting gaze stability that are not gaze stability, I just wanna make sure that you're getting the most accurate information. So if you've been diagnosed with a hypofunction, we are gonna be primarily talking about exercises that are geared towards making the functioning inner ear not respond so quickly, and then the weak inner ear try to respond a little bit quicker, giving you this equal balance that we're looking for. So Cawthorn Cooksey exercises, we're gonna start from the top at what they are. These originated in the 1940s and are still prescribed. And why do I even think that they're still prescribed? I think it's easy. I think it's in a format of going like one through 20, do these exercises, it's in a nice little box. But when it comes to vestibular therapy, people are individuals, symptoms are individuals, treatment plans should be individualized. So Cawthorn Cooksey makes it simple when you say you have dizziness and here you go, do these, but really it's not the most effective means at getting rid of your symptoms. So let's kind of pick this apart a little bit. If you're looking at Cawthorn Cooksey exercises, you'll first see recommendations where it's move the eyes up, move the eyes down, move the eyes left, right, and you'll also see one where it's convergence where you're drawing a pencil or a stick or even your finger that you'll see um, in towards your nose. And that is claiming vestibular rehab. If you look at vestibular practice guidelines, they the evidence strongly suggests that you do not move your eyes in isolation without head motion. Head motion is what actually makes the inner ear activated. So just moving the eyes alone I use that in some certain conditions like concussion or 3PD or vestibular migraine, but my whole intention is to make sure that when the eyes are moving that you're rounding and trying to make sure that you're using your somatosensory system. So the exercises are appropriate, but not for the intention of healing a vestibular inner ear disorder. So what we would do instead the alternative is make sure that you move your head with those eye motions. So go ahead and look up and then look down and make sure your eyes and head are actually moving together. Um, convergence exercises don't really do anything for the inner ear itself. So I won't speak to that other than I may use that with um, concussion. And you just heard me say, oh, that's good to have the inner ear at least activated when you move your head. But alternatively, if you want them to be more effective at kind of getting that equilibrium between the two vestibular nerves, you are going to do gaze stability. Again, you've heard me say it before, the foundation of vestibular rehab. 
So what does that look like? So you wanna move your head small and quick, keeping the image clear or just on the edge of blurring. You'll do that left and right for roughly a minute and up and down for a minute. So it's small, it's quick. That actually is working on your vestibulo-ocular reflex, the inner ear's responsibility to keep the eyes stable on a target when your head is moving. That is the whole function of the vestibular nerve. The next exercises in Cawthorn Cooksey that you'll see are shoulder shrugs. That doesn't do anything particularly for the inner ear. I suppose it can be useful if patients are guarding their neck uh, tense from being dizzy and you just have tension that you want to release. It doesn't hurt anything, but it is not a vestibular exercise. We'll also see a version where you take a ball and you are supposed to be walking, throwing a ball, or kind of looping it um, underneath your knees. You can make a case for vestibular activation because the head and the eyes are moving in correlation to one another. So again, it is not a gaze stability exercise, meaning to work that vestibular ocular reflex, but it does activate the inner ear and does promote movement. Really at the end of the day, we want you moving as opposed to sitting still. The next exercise that you might see in Cawthorn Crooksy is bending over and looking up from a seated or standing position. Now this exercise I think has validity. I use it actually quite a bit when we are talking about residual dizziness in functional activities. The idea is to habituate to emotion starting slow and then working fast. So this way the inner ear and brain have time to desensitize or get used to motion. So that one's a keeper. You'll also see walking up the stairs, down a ramp, up a ramp, eyes open, eyes closed. Again, movement is medicine. So go ahead and keep those. You'll also see turn the head and turn the body. So does that look familiar at all? You may have seen that in VOR cancellation, which again is not particularly used for strengthening the inner ear is good for is reducing motion sensitivity, visual intolerance. I use it a lot for my concussion, migraine, and 3PD patients who have issues with a lot of visual busy environments. So again, it works. It works for a different reason. It is not particularly appropriate for hypofunction, but it is a keeper for other diagnoses. So hopefully you found some of this information useful. I want you to know that there's some validity in some of the exercises in Cawthorn Cooksey that you may have been doing, but alternatively, I wanted you to know how to make those exercises more effective and how to reduce your dizziness quicker by making some changes that actually we have found through research and the decades that promote neuroplasticity and the vestibular system activation. And if you have not already, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified of the new weekly content that I'll be dropping every Tuesday.